Hey guys, my name is Mandy Lucas. I am one of the pastors at PAX Christian Church, and I am going to be doing our next devotional with you guys today. So we have been doing these devotionals. We've been in the book of Acts, chapter one, and we are going to stay there today. We're gonna to move on to the next section of scripture there. Uh, just to recap first before we get going though, um, there are a couple of things that are gonna be important to remember. As we look at this section of scripture today, uh, Jesus has told the disciples, the apostles, not to leave Jerusalem. He has asked them instead to stay, to pause, and to wait for the Holy Spirit. Um, and that is Acts 1, 4, and 5. And then Jesus has also told them that when the Holy Spirit comes, they will receive power and they will be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So that is in Acts 1.8. And so they have been given uh, a little bit of information. They have been asked to stay. Uh, we have talked about how that is a call to pause um, and a call to pray. And so that's kind of a little recap of where we've been. Today, we're gonna pick up the scripture, Acts chapter one, verse 12. And I'm just going to read through it, and you can listen along, or you can grab uh, your own Bible and read through it with me. So I'm reading from the NIV, Acts chapter 1, verse 12. It says, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. And I just want to take a moment and point out here that this section of scripture starts out focused in on the apostles, right? It names 11 apostles right at the beginning and slowly it begins to telescope out right so whenever i've read this i, I haven't really thought about it in that context before that i, I kind of just figured the apostles are there right like that's who's named they're the ones who are given names at the beginning and i just kind of assume that it's this small intimate group of people praying but that's not really uh the stage that's set before us right and so we have started, and on, on purpose, Luke has given you this narrow focus for what's about to happen on the disciples, but it is important to remember there is a large group gathering to pray. There's a large group that has paused what they're doing and has gathered to pray and wait for the Holy Spirit. So that's where we're at. So let me pick it back up. Uh, verse 15 says, in those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in this ministry. So who are they talking about? They're talking about Judas Iscariot. He is not with them. Uh, he was the one who guided um who guided the men to arrest to Jesus and he's no longer with them. And we're going to find out more here in verse 18. It says, with the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open and his intestines spilled out. Yikes. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this. So they called that field in their language, Akeldama. That is field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, Peter says, therefore it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time. The Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness, that's a key word in this passage, witness, with us of his resurrection. So Peter's doing two things here, right? The, everyone has gathered, they've paused, 
they're praying, and as they're praying, Peter stands up, and the focus now becomes the 11. And Peter explains why they're 11 and not 12. They're a man down. And here's the deal. Jesus has told them that when the Holy Spirit comes, they will be his witnesses. They need another witness. One of the things Peter does here is he explains what happened with Judas. We understand that. We're not going to focus on that. We're not going to dwell on that. He was a traitor. Jesus has given us our marching orders and it's time to prepare. We are a witness down. So what do they do? It says, so they, verse 23, so they proposed two men, Joseph called Bersabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the 11 apostles. And now we have a complete team. You know, often when we take time to pause and pray, we enter into a time of preparation. And I don't know about you, but I have felt like COVID has been this huge pause button in our lives. Everything has stopped or everything did stop or things that were normal stopped and other things started and we have just been waiting in this weird pause. Um, and I just want to ask you, you know, the disciples during this time took the time to prepare for what was ahead. And I want to ask you today, what could you be doing during this time to be preparing for what God has for you next? You know, and maybe you're like, I don't know what that is. I have no idea what, what's next, Mandy. And that's okay. Maybe you're in a period of waiting where you just don't see the end of it. And you're praying. And you're stuck on the pause button and you're praying. And I just want to challenge you. What if preparation during this time is to fulfill the greatest commandment? Jesus says the greatest thing that you can do is to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the next is like it, love your neighbor. And what if during this time of waiting that we are all experiencing and you don't know what's coming next, what if during this time you could be loving God with all of you by waiting on him and by praying, by reading his word, by drawing closer to him? What if that was your preparation? Or what if, what if you've been doing that and now it's time to be reaching out and showing the love of God to the people around you? That's, that's the second greatest command, right? That's what we should be doing. If we don't know what to do, we should at least be doing those two things. Or maybe God has put a call on you in your life. God has given you the next thing. He's given you that job. He's given you the next place you're gonna live. And he knows, and, and you know what's coming, you do. What are the things that you could be doing to prepare? What are the things you could be doing to prepare your heart for the people you're gonna meet through that process? How could you be drawing closer to God in order to be ready for what's next? For Brian and I, we have been in this season of, of pausing and prayer for months and months. And I feel like we just entered the season of preparation. We are 40 days away from starting our church and God has opened doors left and right. And now we're in this, this stage where we're filling our ranks. We're looking for volunteers. We're looking for who's going to be part of our team, who wants to come along with us, with this church. And we are preparing for what God is going to do. We can't make it happen, but we can get ready. And so what are things that you could be doing in this season of waiting to prepare for what God has for you next? I'm going to leave you with that and I'm going to pray with you. Father, thank you so much for each person who's listened to this today. Um, thank you for the time if they hung out for the whole 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> and I just, I pray Lord God, that they would be blessed by your word. Father, that, um, 
you would be with them, that you would be guiding them, and that you would be showing them ways that they could prepare uh, for the next season of their life, for the next thing that you have for them. God, I thank you that you are good and that you are in control uh, and that you love us. Father, may our lives honor you and reflect your love to others. Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. I'll see you next time.